All right, hey everybody out there in YouTube world. I just wanted to introduce this project. It's a 1937 Chevy Master Deluxe. Entering it in the Rat Rod Magazine Rat Stock 2024 competition. Uh, it's a 37 Chevy Master. Chopped four inches, put it on an S10 chassis that's on airbags. So it's gonna look pretty sweet. Uh, a lot of work done so far, but there's a lot more to do. So I'd appreciate it if anybody watching would leave a like, comment, anything like that. Maybe subscribe you Can uh, join us along the journey. So. Uh, I'll do a longer intro here shortly. I just wanted to do a quick little snippet so everybody has an idea of what's going on and introduce you to the channel. Uh, again, appreciate it. Let's watch the rest of the video. All right. Well, it seems that every single thing that I do to this car just ends up with more work for me. So I'm very pleased with what we did to the trunk. Uh, we do have the structure of a floor in there. But I was really looking at the inner fender wells and I think what I'm going to need to do is just cut that out entirely and I'm just going to build new tubs for the inside of the wheel wells here. So I think that's going to be this week's project. See if I can get one of them done and then replicate it on the other side. Uh, once I get that done, the, the rear will be in its final place and then we can work on doing the rockers and sills. I thought that was going to be the next thing, but of course I just, you know, got to make more work for myself. So uh, we are making headway though. I think it looks awesome. I think it looks great slammed on the ground and we're going to, you know, keep moving along. So thanks for coming back. I appreciate everybody's comments. Uh, if you have any suggestions while I'm working on this on how I can do it better, please just leave a comment because, you know, this is a learning experience for me and I can use all the help that I can get. So with that being said, let's go inside the trunk here and I'll kind of point and do some, some show and tell so that we can come up with a plan going forward. Okay, so here's what I'm looking at. You can see all the fiberglass that remains over there along that whole fender. Well, I wanna, I wanna not mess with that at all, but what I do need to deal with is the fact that the wheel is still touching there. So what I'm thinking is I will just cut that all out, basically flush with where that bolt is sticking through that's holding my, my brace here for the rear seat. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of round stock from here to make my wheel arch and attach it all the way up front there. I'm gonna do two of them equally um, with the same radius to make my wheel well uh, and the inner fender well heel here. Uh, and then I will connect it down to the frame of my floor down here. And then I'll just fill this in on the outside of this. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do. We can't weld to that stuff there, so. Uh, if anyone has a suggestion about that, I would love to hear what you do uh, come up with. I'm going to build the structure for the wheel well now, but I will start by removing all this material. You can kind of see where that seam is up to that bolt and all the way forward. So uh, I will go all the way around the wheel uh, opening there so that we can start fresh. All right, so we're looking inside the car from the driver's side rear to the passenger side rear. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of round rod and we're going to take it from this point here and arch it up to match the contour from the rear of the rear door. And we're going to go up and back to our uh, support for the rear seat here. So the reason we're going to extend that a little bit is you can see on this side, this is now the, the driver's side. I'm going to put my round rod here and I'm going to follow this backwards but with the arch to match the rear door here so that when you're if anyone's getting in and out of the back seat this contour is going to match and then you know imagine a flat seat there and this will be kind of like an armrest where the inner fender well is going to that thing so uh, that will also allow a little bit more room for the tire even though i think i'm going to get a wheel spacer just to push that out a little bit uh, even though we've got, I don't know, an inch and a half or whatever it is uh, right at the moment. We'll just open that up a little bit, push the wheel out some, and I think that'll help. So what I'm gonna start with doing here is I'm gonna cut the remainder of the inner, inner fender well here because I want the new inner fender well to start on this bar. Again, we're gonna then take the round rod and arch it up to our rear seat bracket or bracket uh, rear seat support there. Okay, so I just did a little bit more craft, craft time here, um, and I just cut this to the fender well back there. I just lined this up, I made a mark, and I, I cut it out, you can see, to match the contour of the wheel well. So this is going to rest on that inner framework. Uh, this is my round rod. I don't have 
a square tubing bender or anything like that, but what I do have is a frame that's not being really used at the moment, and I'm just going to try and gently manipulate this until I reproduce this. I'll just kind of bend a little bit, put it on here. I'll see when I get this piece looking like that, and we'll go in there, we'll try it, probably end up cutting a bunch and manipulating this until we get it to kind of look like an inner fender well, and then we're just going to cover it with some sheet metal. So for the time being, I'm going to leave my template here, and I'm just going to try sticking this in here and bending it a little bit at a time. So basically, I'm just going to push on that frame there, move it down, push it a little bit more. I don't want to overdo it. This is a half inch round rod, and basically I'm just going to kind of continue with that contour uh, until I get it stretched all the way out to match this. Cut it off, see what it looks like when we stick it in there. So I'm going to keep doing some bending here and get back with the end. Alright, so I got that uh, pretty well contoured. There's a bit of a kink right here in the middle, so what I think I'll do is I'm going to cut it off since we're pretty close there, uh, and then after I cut it off, I can, you know, put it in a vise, maybe hit it with a BFH, and smooth it out a little bit, make that look a little bit better there. Um, so I'm going to cut that off now, and then we'll take it in there and see, see how close we got. All right, first test fit. So this is, you can see what I just made out there, bending on the frame rail. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of line it up here as such. You know, we're gonna get it parallel to the support going to the back there, kind of like that. I'm gonna make a pair of these for the, the driver's side, pair of these for the um, passenger side. And then what I'll do is I'm going to weld it onto the frame here, weld it onto the frame back there, and then we will cut out this part of the inner fender well, and then this will be sheathed with a new piece of sheet metal, getting rid of all this stuff here, getting rid of this. And basically, then we are gonna have our inner fender well right here. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Uh, again, there's a little kink right there. I'm gonna flatten that out a little bit, I think, so we get something looking a little bit better. Uh, and then kind of tack it in here so we can start working on our fender well. All right, well, I banged on this for a while. I tried bending these back and forth. Couldn't get it right. I mean, they're close, but they're too far for, you know, anything that would be reasonable to put a piece of metal on. I got the contours fairly close in this area here, but then they get wonky out in this direction. So, um, you know, it was a nice try on my part, but that is a fail. And I've been sitting out here staring at this thing and I'm not really 100% sure what I'm gonna do here other than I think I might just use some more of this square stock um, instead of trying to match this contour here. Uh, we might just do an angle, so I don't know whatever this is here. It's not, not, a, not a very steep incline. Uh, and then I will cut piece here and then just run a straight piece of bar stock back there. I don't know, but I'm sweaty and Frustrated, so I'm kind of giving up for today. I got absolutely nothing done but uh, frustration. So I guess that's where I'm going to leave this particular segment. And I'm going to come back at it another day when I'm not so frustrated. And maybe we'll actually get something done another day. Oh, yeah. And by the way, since, um, you know, this, none of the doors actually shut anymore. So we got to... Definitely got to redo that because I had them shutting nicely before and now they don't win. All right, well, we've got updates. So first things first, the last time I was messing around with this was about five days ago. I think it was Monday, Sunday, I don't know. Can't keep track anymore. Uh, and I was super duper frustrated. I tried doing the thing for the inner fender wells and that, that was a total disaster. Well, in the meantime, two specific things have happened. Uh, I got new hoops put 
onto the rims. Okay, so that dropped it another, I went with, they were 205, 75 uh, R15s before I went with 205, 60s. Well, that brought the diameter of the wheel, uh, excuse me, the wheel tire combination all the way down. So now you can see on the front here, front of the rear fender that, uh, you know, we're on a two by four there. I think once I've got running boards on this, it's gonna be absolutely awesome. So that fender is just, you know, it's just kind of sitting there right now on top of that two by four and the four by four block in the back. So I think the stance right now, if you step back and you kind of look at it, man, that's gonna look pretty friggin' sweet when it's on the ground. Other thing was I got some wheel spacers, which pushed the, those wheels out a little bit. So it turns out I really didn't need to cut all that fender well out, but I did need to cut the trunk out. So whatever, we're gonna deal with it. And the last thing, that I decided to do was, you know, I'm trying to think of how do I fabricate that inner fender well when my uh, experiment with those uh, round rods, well, that was a stupid idea, it turns out. So what I did was I just went online and I bought some trailer fenders, cheapo, 30 bucks each. Uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take you in there, I'll show you kind of the way things I think are going to line up. It's gonna be way better. I already got the fender. I'm just gonna weld it to the skeleton of the frame that I got for the trunk. And we're gonna make it a lot better. So I'll bring you inside the car and we'll take a look at it. All right, so these are my super cheap trailer fenders off the old interwebs, 30 bucks each. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually just cut the remainder of this out. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put it over there. I'm gonna weld it onto my brace that I made for the back seat here. I'm gonna do the same thing both sides. And I think it's really gonna work out well. Uh, let me bring you around this way to the inside of the car and kind of show you what we're thinking. Basically what I'm going to do, we will cut off the remainder of the inner fender well here. I'm going to slice off maybe uh, an inch or two there, basically enough so that I can put this edge against here and the far edge on the inside part of my that, that horizontal piece there going towards the back of the trunk. So then I can weld a piece of sheet metal on the inner side of the fender well so that basically from here back is entirely covered. Then when I do this part of the floor, I will make a sheet piece of sheet metal that way. So that's gonna be the plan. I'm gonna see if I can haul ass because it's the father-in-law's birthday weekend, turned 70 today. So I'm gonna see if I can get this done tonight because tomorrow's the surprise birthday party and kind of have to have this jalopy out of the garage because it's gonna rain here tomorrow, of course, and we need to have access so that we can get all the family and everybody in here. Oh, by the way, I did throw the fenders on the front here and I think it's gonna look freaking killer. Of course, nothing is lined up Frame rail has to be notched there to allow that to fit in. That's cattywampus. This side here, same thing. Cattywampus because it still has the anti-lock brakes on it there. So move these in. Boy, I think that um, it's going to look pretty epic. All said and done. So let's get after those fender wells. Well, didn't get any work done yesterday and we had to get ready for the father-in-law's birthday. So happy birthday, Jim. You can see we've got everything cleared up and set up in here for our celebration. And something else happened this morning, which was unexpected. We got Daisy. Oh, come here, little piggy. This is Daisy. She's a couple months old. She's a little piglet. And she joined the family this morning when we went to a little swap meet at Tractor Supply. Right, Piggy? All right, so here's the deal. Uh, I think I have some time that I'm actually gonna be able to put some you know, hours in on the car here. Well, maybe not hours, maybe minutes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this trailer fender. I measured from the outside of the 
where the, the, the outermost part of the wheel well is going to be. I'm going to cut that flush inside the body. Then the other side of this is going to go along that horizontal piece that goes from front to back in the car. Uh, and then I will weld this to the skeleton that I made and then probably tack or weld between the body and this as long as I get good metal. I might need to put a piece of flat stock between the body and this because there is a lot of that fiberglass there. So I might just run a, you know, eighth inch, maybe two inch piece. Got some bar stock laying around here that I can use for that, uh, just so that I can fill it in so that I can tack well this to the frame. So what I'm gonna do now, uh, I set this up to use the plasma cutter. I just used my speed square there. Uh, I measured the, the dimension I need and I just ran a line like such so that I could set it up with a plasma cutter. Uh, I'm gonna cut that now and then we're gonna put it back in there, uh, see if it actually comes close to fitting. And then if, if it does, uh, I'm assuming that I will need to continue kind of trimming here and there. Got to cut the inner fender out that's on the car. But at least, you know, I'm kind of at least getting some time to work on this on Sunday evening after all the festivities. So let's try cutting it. And I think that is one of the coolest tools that I have. It's like a lightsaber. Uh, I didn't spend a lot on it. It was I think, the cheapest one Jags had, but man, it is, it is cool. So uh, I got that cut there. I'm just gonna move along to this side of the fender now, clamp it up again, and we will you know, continue cutting this off. All right, so this is just the off cut of that fender, the skinny bit that I cut off. So what my measurement was previously, as I said, was from here to here. This looks like it's actually gonna work out really well for me. If I put it in here like such, just to simulate where it's gonna go, I will have it welded here and along the edge of this. Then I can put, when I put my uh, seat, the metal for the floor here, I can butt that up against that. I can put, I got a nice flat surface here, but I can fill this in with sheet metal for the inner side of the fender well. Uh, this, when I put the, the larger, wider piece, I'm gonna cut this here from this post all the way back along here to this piece. I can weld the entire top of it over to here. And then I can also take a piece of sheet metal to cover this whole area. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just make a cardboard template and I will cover this whole area here with sheet metal and then I can weld along the top of it as well. So I think it's gonna be pretty structurally sound. Uh, and then when I get to the back end there, uh, what I'm gonna do is I will, of course, weld, fully weld it along the top of this when I've got the sheet metal on the inside for the fender. Uh, so I think it'll be pretty good. Uh, and then this whole piece here can go away. So uh, that's, that's plan. Okay, so a couple observations. First off, 
I am entirely sick of dealing with fiberglass in this vehicle. If you're watching this and you're a beginner like me, please don't ever, ever think that you can do body work on the inside for repairing sheet metal by putting layers and sheets of fiberglass uh, into the body in places like where the fender needs to mount or the fender well. Like, just fix it. Do it right. Put it in the ass. So, they're going to try and stick this in here. So the plan is for this to kind of ride up on this here. And we'll make it fit in the back. So, looks like first try here that that needs to go in further for this to be able to and man we're, we're pretty close I might just make a little notch there for this to sit in so that it can uh, get up closer to where it belongs but man that's gonna look pretty sweet I think it's gonna work out really well Got to take I'm gonna notch this here a little bit so that that thing can go in there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to do some uh, thinking in the background about approach here, so. Give me a minute and I'll report back to you. All right, so this kind of worked out pretty spectacularly uh, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, as far as my capacity for building. Um, so instead of cutting that, what I did is you can see I just cut a little notch here. So when I put that in here now, I got that lined up there. This is right up against the B pillar. I put my little clamp here. And I put it like such. Basically, right now, once I've got this welded here and welded here and welded on the bracket for the rear of the rear seat, um, what's going to happen is this will get sheet metal on the inside of it here. And I'll fill in the back there as well. For, with some sheet metal and we got ourselves an inner fender weld. I think that's uh, that worked out pretty pretty dang well as far as I'm concerned. I couldn't ask for better. So I'm going to grind this off here some, clean this up. Uh, ultimately, like I said, what I'll plan on doing is I'll sheet this with a piece of sheet metal as well. So this entire area back here will be covered and, and remain on the outside. Uh, this will have sheet metal here, which will make the inner part of the fender well. Finally, got something going my way. So this worked out real well. Um, I'm going to clean up this stuff here a little bit, and then we're going to attack this thing in place. And then what I'll do is back there, I don't know if it's in frame, but I'm going to cut the bottom of that fender well back there um, flush with, with this horizontal piece going to the back. I think it'll look good. Now that, I'm, now that I'm out here, this lines up nicely with, uh, no, never mind. I need to cut this, I need to cut this back a little bit further because my bolt holes on the back here need to be exposed so that outer fender can bolt on. So um, I need to trim this a little bit back here. Okay, well, we got a plan. All right, so I've just got this piece of 18 gauge left over from something. So I'm going to kind of line up my fender here 
And I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going uh, to make the cut on the inside. I'm going to actually weld this piece on the inside of the fender. So that would be the, what basically the wheel is in here. Um, so that there's not a, you know, you don't have this edge or the seam where the metal was cut kind of on the inside of the seat or where the, um, you know, where somebody might run up, run up against it. Uh, so I'm going to make a mark that's actually inside this. I'll leave about a quarter inch, I guess. Um, so there'll be a quarter inch overlap between this piece and this piece. I'm not going to well, I guess I, eh, I could cut and butt, try and do that, but I think I'm just going to do like a lap joint. I'm just going to, I'm going to cut this a little bit, this piece a little bit wider so it'll rest on the inside lip of the fender well, uh, and then I'm just going to run my tacks along the inside of it. I'm not going to bother with the trying to make it look like one piece. I'm going to, it's going to be two pieces, and I'm just going to cut one, weld it on there. So uh, I'm going to make those marks, I think. I'll just trace it out like such so I know where it goes. Like that. And I know that I want to use this mark here on both sides. So that's the outer, outer, outer side of it. I'll just use this piece that I cut off here. And I'll move it down so that I have my profile exactly the same on all the sides. Huh, that's weird. That doesn't even match up at all. Not even up close. Interesting. Hmm. That's weird. Okay, well, I'm going to do some figuring here. I don't know why that would not even be close. Not even. Kind of warped that much. But cutting it, it looks straight. Out for a second. All right, so I'm not really sure what the heck I did there before, but I got my line traced out on the fender. That's the outer part of the fender. That's the inside of the fender. I just, quite honestly, I just used my straight edge and I just kind of eyeballed the difference between there and there and I drew a line. So we are going to follow the middle line all the way around like such. And I think I'll just use this straight edge again as a guide. Uh, get the plasma cutter on there cut them out uh, then we will take this piece and we'll put it on the inside of that and we'll take that whole thing and put it in there Okay, so here's the final uh, kind of setup that we got. You see, I trimmed a little bit of this here. That's to fit under the where the outer fender well is going to go. So this is going to go into the car. I'm going to clamp it, clamp it in place, and hope that it lines up. If it does, then we are going to start welding this in as a part of the body. So let's go for it.
Well, there you go. That's one of them tacked in there. Uh, I think that you got the concept of what we were going for. It's held in place now, just tacked in, but I think that's gonna work out pretty well for what we need. We will then have to do, of course, mirror image on the other side there. Eh, lights in your eyes. You get the you get the idea of what we're working on here. So uh, that's gonna be it for tonight. It's after 11 on Sunday, regular work week coming up. So I'm gonna go in, clean up a little bit because I am a sweaty mess here. And we'll get back after this another day, as usual. All right, yet again, cut pieces out, gonna redo this. So my thought process, people were probably wondering why in the actual F did I line that up the way that it did? This is the off cut. So I had it like this and it was on a bit of a goofy angle. Well, why did I do that? Well, a couple of reasons. First off, if I push that over to this edge here, what I was trying to do was minimize this area here that would be a weird gap. I could put it down here like that, and then there'd be a little bit of more of a, an area to fill in here. I guess that's fine. That would make this look more like a traditional wheel well back here. The other thing was, when I cut the previous inner fender well out, there was a lot of material that went down there to cover up the frame. So by doing it like this, my sheet metal went down there covering in this area of the the fender well. Well, whatever. I didn't like it. I had nightmares for like two nights thinking about what the hell was I actually doing. So I'm going to put it in here again, kind of like this. And the reason for that is I'm going to compromise this little bit of overlap. I can put a piece of sheet metal there, I guess, just to have this more like a flat area. You know, whoever's in the back seat can rest their arm on it, whatever. It'll, it'll look better. So uh, I obviously already cut the other one out. I'm gonna put this back in. So, you know, this is gonna be like our fifth, sixth attempt. I don't know what I'm doing here, but gonna try and line this up, get this in here today, get the final uh, on the passenger side as well so that we can actually, you know, be done with the wheel wells here. Maybe sheathe in some of the seat trunk because I can't move this around really unless it's on the casters because I don't have a compressor or a tank in here currently because I don't have a floor to put it on. So. A lot of moving parts. I really just want to finish the fender wells. So that's today. Um, you know, let's just see how far we get. Okay, so one of the things that you'll find about making mistakes when you're building this is that you spend a lot of time fixing the stupid mistakes that you've made when you're building the thing. So I'm going to the area I cut out a little bit too much. I narrowed it up here. I'm just going to butt weld this piece back in here so that it covers up um, an area that was wide open. Then we are going to take this back inside and we are going to weld it in place. Permanent, final answer. Let's just get it done. All right, well, you all know the saying, the grinder and paint make you the welder you ain't. So we got that patch back in there. You can see it might have a little notch. The reason I had to do the notch again was when I had this, when I had this on that goofy angle in there, I had to make the notch so it would fit over where the old fender was. Now that I cut all that out and I'm gonna put this in kind of more level, or at least I'm gonna make it parallel to the seat floor or where your ass is gonna go, um, I could fill that in. So. That's that. I'm gonna go stick it in there now. 
We're gonna line it up. It's gonna look awesome. Let's go. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, I did do a dry fit in here without the camera on because well, I couldn't figure out what I was doing. I got it in here. What I wanted to do was make the top of this look more like a wheel well. Got it parallel to our frame here, so we're at about 5.2 something degrees on that. And here we're at 5.3, 5.0, so close enough for government work. So I got a tack here and in the back and in the front. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to you know, weld in here. I'll have to weld on the back side of this because that's on a little bit of a funky angle because of the support back here. So with some tacks on this, this should be finalized. What I, like I was talking about, there's gonna be a gap here to fill. There's a gap here to fill. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking a sheet, piece of sheet metal and I'm going to put that just to cover this whole thing. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll put some spray foam in there, maybe some rust reformer spray. Uh, I'm not gonna mess around with anything really in there. Uh, just some, maybe some, if I got some fiberglass insulation, I'll just tuck it in there. Uh, nothing fancy. So I got some you know, gaps and things like that to fill. For right now, I'm just gonna put some more tacks on it so it stays put. Uh, and then I will get around to finally welding uh, everything in later. So I'm going to um, kind of reset on my position here, go to the back, speed up the video so you can watch a little bit of this being welded in. I think I need to turn the heat up on that a little bit as well. It's kind of snap, crack, or popping. Uh, so once I get that going the right direction, uh, we will keep welding this in. And then we'll go ahead and do the passenger side. All right, so here's the deal. That took way longer than it's supposed to, but I think finally it does look really good. It is totally welded in there. So that took the combination of, I don't know, four days of work with between the uh, stupid things that I did and the things that I had to revise. So I'm gonna see if I can do the passenger side in like tonight. Now that I know what I'm doing, I will kind of cut the fender down to this shape. I will get the uh, inside of it welded in there. I will weld it onto the bracket or the uh, skeleton for the trunk frame here. So um, looks pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Lots more to do, but uh, I don't know if you want to watch me wa uh, while I'm working on the passenger side. I, I might not record that because I'd rather just kind of focus on getting the work done. Maybe I'll do some time lapse. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be dinner time here soon. I'm going to try and finish it up as much as I can on this for this week because yet again, another tournament, I'll be three hours from home. So I really, really got to start cranking on this stuff and get uh, things done when I can. So let's do the passenger side.
All right, well, here's the deal. It's late. I'm heading in. Uh, we got both fender wells secured in here. They look pretty good. I think that's gonna work well for uh, what we're doing here. So what I'd like to do um, tomorrow when I get some time, uh, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna try and put my supports here and then I'm gonna put some sheet metal on where the seat is gonna go here uh, to kind of finalize the this rear seat area. Then we have to put some metal in the trunk. So as I said, I can put my compressor uh, compressors and tank in there. So they're kind of in the car where they need to go. That way I can also hook the airbags up. Not that they have to go up and down a lot, but at least then I can lift the car a little bit just so I can move it around in the garage easier and not have it on the casters. Then after that, I'm gonna have to tackle the sills and the doors because they're all wonky and uh, you know they're torn up and basically we need to build all of that stuff. So again, fender, fender well is in on both sides. I think that looks good. So uh, we'll get back after it another night, you know, as per our usual arrangement. So uh, thanks for coming back and sticking with me. Uh, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of uh, shenanigans happening during this segment here. Uh, you know, it's back and forth. I can't even remember when I started recording videos for this uh, particular, uh, you know, the video that's going to come out this weekend. So hopefully, you know, by the time I'm done, I have some something co cohesive here that's going to actually make this look like I'm building something. So thanks. All right, so here's the deal on what feels like day 11 billion of this particular video that I'm making. Uh, what I'm going to do is make the supports for behind the rear seat. Uh, then we'll move on to maybe some floor, maybe some trunk. I don't know. Uh, I actually have a little bit of time today, so hopefully I can crank something out in you know one reasonable day as opposed to you know jumbled days in and out. I can't even remember when I started recording little clicks for this. So let's get in the trunk. Uh, in the back seat and start making some supports so that we can put some, I think I'm just gonna use plywood for that, but then we need to make the floor for the seat, the redo the trunk, all that stuff. So I'm gonna get after it today uh, and hopefully we'll make some good progress. All right, here's the deal, pretty straightforward. You can see what we're doing. Just gonna put these vertical supports in along here. If you can't pick up what I'm putting down, that's exactly what the plan is. I'm gonna steal that one from the Fat Electrician. If you don't know what that channel is, go check it out. I'll put a link in the description or something. Pretty awesome dude, go America, uh, love his channel. He's a really hilarious guy, so check him out too. In any case, I'm gonna weld these in here, boop, 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 and then the back of the back seat will be done. Then we can sheathe this part here. We can put a piece of plywood or a piece of metal there, and I have to go pick up some uh, 18 gauge steel, so I'm gonna do that this afternoon so we can continue working on the back seat here. All right, so here's the deal. Went out to, to my steel guy, got some 18 gauge uh, that I'm gonna use for the bottom of the rear seat. Uh, I've made some marks on here where my supports are underneath, and I'm going to mark that out, and then we're going to also mark some lines where I'm gonna use the bead roller and put some beads in this for a little bit of stiffness. I'm also gonna notch where my uh, vertical supports are, and then we will uh, get this in there for the rear seat. So I'm just gonna mark out where the parts are that go under your butt where you're in the seat here. Like I said, then I'm gonna notch it out so that um, it, it fits a little bit tighter uh, along those vertical support pieces that I put in. I'm also gonna put some holes in it 
uh, so that I can plug weld this to those supports and then we weld fully across the front and the back and the sides of it. Uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So uh, I kind of love how you know the master trunk lid is now dual purpose storage area as well as uh, functional for the trunk. So just going to mark out a few holes. I don't know. I don't think it needs that many uh, for the plug welds. But I don't know. Let's just say two two inches from the edge on both sides. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Four inches, four inches, and in the middle. So we'll do, yeah, five of them. Probably fine. Uh, and then we'll do that with my center punch. Two, six, and sixteen. Um, yeah, I think I think five in each of those is going to be fine. So uh, we'll drill those out, notch the edges here, stick it in there, and get it welded in. Okay, so I got those drilled out and I cut the edges here so I can put it around those vertical supports. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of this. Uh, I think I'm just going to do three lines in each section here. So this is an old carpentry trick, um, but you know, so we are at about 42 and a quarter in width. Uh, being lazy, if you don't want to do that math, just kind of take your tape and you turn it. Uh, until you get to an even number over here, that's easy to divide. So in this case, I'm just going to go until I'm at 44, uh, and then here's 22 right in the middle. That'll be my center for that. And then what I'll do is I will make my line like such there, right? And then I'm going to go three and a half inches so that direction. So uh, one, two, three and a half right there. So there's my next line. Right, like such. And go three and a half this direction. Like that. Right, so I'm going to make three lines in each segment here. I already marked these other ones out, so I'm going to put a line and then we'll take it over to, well, I don't even have it set up yet. I'll take it over to the bead roller uh, and we will put some lines in there for a little bit of structural rigidity for our panel here. I'm not breaking news, I don't think, with you know how you uh, mark out your lines or anything like that, but I do appreciate the time and effort that people put into doing these kind of things for sure. Uh, I'm just going to, let's just say we'll stop I don't know, an inch and a half short, two inches, two inches. We'll stop two inches short of that edge. We'll stop two inches short of this edge. There you go. So I gotta set the bead roller up. See you in a couple minutes. All right, everybody, this is Jamie. Say hi, Jamie. Hi. She's my wife. She's the one who is letting me be out here and do this crazy project. And, uh, you know, so she's the one who's gonna be turning the crank on the bead roller here. We've only used it once before. This is gonna be the second time we're doing it. So uh, that means you're professional, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, we're gonna 
run it through, get our sheet metal set so we can put it in there so we've got some better support under the back seat. Uh, so we're gonna throw it on time lapse here and show you when we're done. Ready to go? Yep. Thanks, love. <laughs> All right, well, here's where we're at after doing the bead rolling. So we got it just clamped in there temporarily. I'm gonna start filling some plug welds, do some tacks around the edges here. Uh, you could probably see we were struggling there when we were doing the bead rolling. You'll notice that there's only two rolls in the middle of the uh, seat pan here, whatever you wanna call it. And that's because, again, don't know how to use a tape measure, kind of measured the wrong uh, throat distance for the bead roller and therefore I could only get two in there but I think the thing's pretty rigid as it stands so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, so I'm going to throw this uh, on a tripod and we're going to start doing some welding back here and then the floor of the rear seat should be pretty well in there. Well, there you go. You can see we've got the rear seat or the floor under the rear seat done. We've got our wheel wells in. This needs to be finally welded. You can see what I was doing there, just doing some of my spot welds here to hold it on the horizontal supports. Got it tacked all the way around the perimeter. Looks pretty good. Uh, I think I'm willing to try it out and sit on it. So uh, I think that's probably gonna wind it up for this video, uh, but I think we got a lot done. I got the metal for the trunk back there, so we're gonna build that floor next time. But for right now, this is where I think it's gonna end. All right, well, if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Uh, I mean, it means a lot to me that people are actually watching these videos. So got the rear seat in, this is awesome, good success for, well, it took a couple weeks to get here. So I really appreciate everybody coming back, checking things out. It's a good thing also that the front floor is gonna be about a foot lower than this because my 6'5", uh, would have pretty tight fit here in the back seat. But what we'll do next time is either going to be finish the trunk or the sills or something. I don't know. It's going to be a, a challenge to get anything done in the pe next couple of weeks. But again, I really appreciate everybody who's watching the videos coming back. So if you liked it, click on the like or su subscribe. Give me some comments. I really do appreciate the input. And I don't know when we'll get back after it, but you know, it is a work in progress. So thanks again. See you next time.